Howdy. Today I'm reviewing Transformers Prime R.I.D. Cliff Jumper. For the first time ever, actually, we have a Cliff Jumper whose design is drastically different from Bumblebee's, but he still retains the eagerness and overconfidence of the G1 Minibot. Furthermore, voiced by professional wrestler Dwayne The Rock Johnson in the show. How much more awesome can you get? Tough break, Cliff. They always hit the nail on the head when it comes to muscle cars, and Cliff Jumper's no exception. This particular car is said to blend elements of a Plymouth Barracuda and a Dodge Challenger, with hood horns, which, in my opinion, fits the guy who was just born to fight. There's nice paint on the headlights, grille, hubcaps, exhaust pipes, and the rear bumper. Otherwise, the deco is fairly basic, as well as show accurate. Since Dark of the Moon, most figures have randomly located ports that allow you to plug any weapons slash accessories onto the vehicle in plain sight. With Cliff Jumper, there are two ports and two pegs on his hammer slash rifle, so you can plug in the weapon like this, this, this and this. I prefer this. The hammer slash rifle itself is fairly simple, but very nicely detailed, and not hampered by any gimmicks like the mech tech weapons, which... Let's be honest, we're not all that well received. You may have noticed during the transformation that when you pull the shoulders down, the head rises out of the chest. A nice, non-intrusive automorph there. The conversion is intermediate in its complexity, though it cheats by incorporating a fake car roof chest. In any event, we end up with a bot that looks ready to lay the smack down on someone. Everything from the bulkiness to the facial expression screams, Blood Knight. A lot of people tend to label the first edition figure as being more show accurate, but looking at this guy next to the show model, I'd say this does a fair job. Wouldn't you agree? If I had to nitpick about the look, I'd say the forearms, while okay from the front, are pretty crooked from the side. They're formed using the deluxe movie jazz trick of simply folding two panels together, though these do feel more substantial in comparison. Plus, he actually has fully functional hands. The backpack's also a little messy, but it's compact to go with it. You're probably not going to notice it most of the time. That said, there's a tab moulded underneath the hood horns that looks like it pegs into a slot on one of the panels, but it simply rests there. Fortunately, the hinges are strong enough to keep everything from flopping about. Other hinges, along with ball joints and swivels, allow you to pull off some pretty good poses with this guy. Plus, the ball-jointed ankles help with stability. Finally, there's his weapon. As with car mode, it can be held as a hammer or a rifle, though he grips it better as a hammer. Some have complained about the lack of a guns replacing wrists gimmick, but that's not an issue with me. I'll admit, I actually waited for this version of Cliff to go on clearance because, well... I was just interested in other figures first. Having said that, while I don't recommend him as highly as, say, Wheeljack, it's still an all-around good figure, and worth getting on clearance, or even at full retail price. And you know what? For as much as they reference him in the show, it's still a pity he was snuffed in the premiere. Guess that means they didn't make many toys of this guy.